did an event in 1946 cause the eventual rise of Mystery Babylon, the Great Reset, and the fall of America? All these things seems pretty incredible. But in 1945, think back, the USA had just defeated Germany and Japan, the Axis powers in the World War II, whose leadership both practiced paganism or even Satanism. And with the end of the war, American missionaries flooded into war-stricken regions. It may have been the high watermark of Christian America, but was a hidden an almost unknown event about to take place leading to the rise of just the opposite. Mystery Babylon, the fall of America, and even the Great Reset. It would be a return to the ancient Babylonian demon gods. And I dare say it is the genesis of much of the evil and satanic practices we see in today's world. So what was that event? This is a super important point. If our world and nation was changed by an event in 1946, then we need to know what event that was and we need to know how to overcome it. Was something let loose in early 1946 that has influenced government, morals, media, and the church ever since? Did something come into our world that year? So what could have entered the world in 1946? Perhaps it was a demon, fallen angel, maybe even more than one, entities the ancient Babylonians called gods. That is going to be our theory. We're going to explore that thought throughout this video. First, let's examine what happened right after that time, right after 1946. If a demon truly entered our world, events should be consistent with that event. 1946 and 47 marked the greatest explosion of UFO sightings in history. Since it is the theory of this channel that UFOs are real, but actually manned by demonic fallen angels, not aliens, this would fit the theory that fallen angels entered this world back in 1946. Also, in 1947, a landmark Supreme Court decision forever changed the USA. The Everson versus the Board of Education decision. I bet you haven't heard of it. But this Supreme Court decision caused the phrase separation of church and state to enter the American culture and law. All subsequent Supreme Court decisions detrimental to believers like abortion, taking prayer out of school, same-sex marriage, would in part be based on this landmark decision. This also then fits with the theory that something may have happened in 1946 that would influence those making our laws from that point on. Now, not everything spiritual after the spring of 1946 was negative. <laughs> on the contrary, on May 14, 1948, Israel was recreated as a nation. Jesus spoke of this event as the sprouting of leaves on the fig tree in Matthew 24 and the fig tree parable. In this previous video, we discussed this event. There's a link in the description. This marked the beginning of the final generation. The generation that saw the sprouting of leaves on the fig tree would see the return of Jesus. So the final generation officially began at that time also. But what about the end times? Did it actually begin two years earlier with the re-entry of the Babylonian gods into this world in 1946? Only two years separate these two incredible earth-shaking events. One bad, one good. So my answer is maybe, maybe it did start in 1946. But before we explore the actual event in 1946, let's look at what the Bible says about these entities, entities that may have entered our world through a portal. In the Old Testament, they were called Shedim. In ancient Babylon, this word meant spirit beings that the Babylonians thought could be good or bad, but to the Hebrews, they were always bad. They sacrificed to demons, Shedim, not to God, to gods they did not know, to new gods, new arrivals that your fathers did not fear. Deuteronomy 
32, 17. And in Psalms, the same word is used for those who and in Psalm, the same word is used for those to whom child sacrifices were made. They served their idols, which became a snare to them. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons, Shedim. Psalm 106, 36 through 37. Huh. Notice that. Child sacrifice. Makes you think of the Roe v. Wade decision, doesn't it? In the Greek translation of the Old Testament, this term Shedim is translated as demonia or demons. Paul uses this term for them as well. The things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons, 1 Corinthians 10 20. So Moses and Paul agree that demonic spirit beings exist and they confirm that it's these beings that were the ancient gods that the pagans worshipped. So, ancient Babylonian gods were actually demons. And Paul further explains that they sit in heavenly places and control our world. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, Ephesians 6.12. So if you imagine that our struggle is against political forces or forces who practice immorality, Paul tells us that isn't it. We struggle against Shedim who are organized into principalities, powers, and rulers. Three different classes of these Shedim. And we are theorizing it is at least one or more of these that crossed over into our dimension in 1946. And that much of the negative that has happened since then is partly the responsibility of this event. Remember that in 1945, we were at the high water mark of Christian America. Germany and Japan's demonic leaders were beaten and missionaries were on their ways to foreign fields. But then 1946 happened. Was this the coming of the lion, bear, leopard and beast coming out of the abyss per Daniel 7 and Revelation 13? Were they some of the Shadim to cross over into this world? Well, maybe, possible, did this happen in 1946? Maybe we just simply don't know. We don't have enough information to answer that one. What we do know is that the USA has fallen into gross immorality and dysfunction ever since. Our whole world has fallen into it. In this previous video, we explained the biblical descent of the USA. A link is down in the description to watch this other video after this one is done. But before we look at 1946, let's continue to explore what happened to the USA after this date. In the 1950s, Lyndon Johnson, who was then a senator but would become president, infamously so, added a tagline to a banking bill making it illegal for anyone with tax-exempt status to try and influence elections. Uh, by the way, Last Days Overcomers, our ministry, <laughs> has tax-exempt status. I guess they don't want us influencing elections. Want to know why so few pastors speak about elections and bad candidates? This is why. Right there, Lyndon Johnson. Then in the 1960s, the Supreme Court based on its 1947 decision of separating church and state, outlawed prayer in school, and then also outlawed the discussion of Christianity in school. Children would no longer hear about God in their schools. Later in 1987, the Supreme Court would make it illegal to teach creationism in school and only sanction the teaching of evolution. Going back to the 1960s, in 1963, President John F. K. was murdered. Then, at the end of the decade, Reverend Martin Luther King was murdered. In both cases, the U.S. government itself were prime suspects, never proven, but prime suspects. 1969, no-fault divorce was allowed in California under Ronald Reagan, who would eventually be president as well. The 1960s were the free love decade as well. Then, of course, in 1973, the Roe v. Wade decision made it legal to take the life of an unborn child. Remember what Psalm 106 said about child sacrifice and how much the Shadim like it. 
Then, of course, in 2015, we had the same-sex marriage Supreme Court decision. And since then, all the gender confusion laws. But all of it goes back to 1946. So what happened that year? The so-called Babylon working conducted by John Whiteside Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard between January 4th and March 4th, 1946 has been the object of a lot of speculation. Parsons was a major force in the early development of solid fuel rocket boosters for the USA and NASA. He was a major early force in the development of NASA. A crater on the moon is named for him and the JPL NASA lab, some call the Jet Propulsion Lab, is suspected to actually be named the John Parsons Lab, JPL. He died under very mysterious circumstances in an explosion in 1952. The other participant, Pulp Fiction author L. Ron Hubbard, eventually founded the Church of Scientology. How interesting is that? Both men were students of black magic and decided to conduct experiments to open a portal into the abyss designed to bring Babylon into physical manifestation. That was their plan. The experiment was based on the Book of the Law by a guy named Aleister Crowley, another known Satanist. This book was supposedly dictated to Crowley by a demon much as the Quran was to Muhammad. It was a recipe to bring about Babylon. Given the Bible's description of mystery Babylon as an end time totalitarian regime, this attempt to bring about Babylon into the real world is really a frightening thought. Hubbard envisioned this Babylon as a woman riding a beast, just like out of Revelation. Whether he got this from the Bible, however, or from a demon, we do not know. We don't know if he actually read the Bible. What was the result of this experiment? Parsons said, quote, a door opened and something came through, end of quote. So an entity or a demon came into our world, according to Parsons. In Parsons' book, The Book of Babylon, January 4th through March 4th, 1946, EV, he outlines the entire experiment, including the reasons for it. Quote, the present age is under the influence of the force called, in magical terminology, Horus. Horus, by the way, was an Egyptian god. This force is completely blind. You've heard of the eye of Horus? It's actually on our dollar bill. It's the eye at the top of the pyramid. Um, so anyway, he was completely blind because he doesn't have that eye and depends upon the men and women who, whom it manifests to guide it, end of quote. Parsons was summoning a demon who would possess people and through whom it would act. Remember the eye of Horus on our dollar bill, as we said, the disembodied eye indicates that Horus doesn't have it. Notice that Parsons said Horus was blind. And that's why, because he doesn't have the eye. The eye of horse is missing. Those who are possessed by this force provide sight for this demon in the world. Now, horse is only one name for this being, who the world originally knew as Nimrod. Revelation 17 tells us the beast who comes out of the abyss has seven heads. And on these heads are blasphemous names, multiple names. We aren't told what these names are. But it's interesting that most of the kingdoms of the ancient world have a god or gods that is their name for Nimrod, Apollo in Greece, Horus, Marduk in Persia, etc. Are these the blasphemous names on the heads of the beast? Maybe so. In fact, probably so. I think it's likely. So the question is, did Parson summon a being or beings from the abyss into our world through some kind of portal using an ancient incantation? Was one of them the beast? Have they been responsible for the fall of the USA, the rise of Babylon, the Great Reset, etc., etc., etc.? If so, 
This should cause believers to pause when thinking about how to fight against these forces of wickedness right now. Believers think this is some kind of political struggle, not some kind of struggle against human forces, not. But Paul told us differently, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, Ephesians 6, 12. And if we are struggling against spiritual forces, then our weapons must be spiritual. If this truly is the spirit of the beast that entered our world in 1946, it should give believers pause about what the outcome will be because only Jesus overcomes the beast. Our efforts on our own are going to fail. Let me say that again. Our efforts on our own are going to fail. Only Jesus overcomes the beast. So that means our efforts on this earth need to be focused on preparing the way for Jesus, much as John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus in the first century. Think about it. If Jesus overcomes the beast, we should be doing everything in our power to look for and hasten the coming day of God. So click right here, because if we're going to prepare the way of Jesus, we need to know what Satan's strategies are in these last days. And that video is going to show you. So till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.